Welcome to our program on immigration and you. I am your immigration attorney, Michael Fulwani, and once again, we are with us, attorney David Nachman, my law partner. Thanks so David, much, welcome. Michael. Always a pleasure. Now, in our last uh, two or three programs, we have been talking about President Obama's uh, uh, speech and uh, in which he said, uh, that was on probably Friday, November 21st, about November, the November 20th, 21st, Thursday night, 21. yeah. Yeah. Uh, in which he talked about the executive action under which more than 5 million people will be able to get a deferred deportation and a permission to work. We talked about the DACA, we talked about the provisional waivers, and we talked about some uh, points on the business side of the, the and what, H4 Second, employment yeah. authorization to H4 people and counting the visa numbers, uh, which will reduce the backlogs. Many things we talked about. Exactly. So let us, let us, one very important thing we did not do that, that I want to do and we both want to talk about, is that uh, uh, people who are uh, unethical, who are trying to, agents or whatever you call them, unfortunately. Notarios. Unfortunately, yeah. some of our brother attorneys as well, I must say, they, they are looking at getting a case, getting the money, not even knowing exactly what are the details of it and what are the requirements of it. And that has become a big problem it was. Remember 1986 when uh, President Reagan was there, they passed the amnesty law, what you call it, in 1986. And many, lots of people, then they got the money from the people, they disappeared and a lot of people lost the money. But losing money is just not one thing, I'm telling you. Last the person, last two, three thousand. What happens? The worst thing is these people don't know anything. I mean, I know about some, uh, you know, David, listen to me. I know about some people, a woman, a lady, who filed 60 petitions, 60 husbands. Oh, she had her own birth certificate and they will have a fake marriage certificate. They keep on putting a fake with one, whoever gives the money, make a fake. And they, all of a sudden, the immigration service caught it, 60 husbands, separate times. It was a fraud. But how much money, there were agents who shared the money with her. Mm -hmm. And political asylum came in. And I know a lot of our viewers, whether Gujaratis or Punjabis or many of our viewers, they come to us and they say, I have a deportation order. And what do I do? I say, how did you get a deportation order? They say, we applied for a political asylum. Where did you, how did you, on what basis? He said, Babri Masjid. You know, Babri Masjid is a masjid on which big fight. I said, but you come from a, a small town in Gujarat. Right. What is the likelihood what the that you're... What there? Right. Oh, right. then say, oh, right. you, know, sir, you know, sir, you know, sir, a lot of people apply right. to political asylum. They got a work permit and all that. I say, yeah, they got a work permit, but no, but deportation. Right. So why did you do it? They say, honestly, sir, truthfully, we didn't know anything about this. We have the agent or a person who said there's a new law. And we'll can get you a green card. It'll cost you $3,000, dollars $5,000. Sign here, sign here, sign here, give me your photos. Right. And they either they filed again the marriage, fraudulent marriage, or the person didn't know. He just wanted an EAD. Right. Or they, in the political asylum cases, there were no basis. I tell you, one lawyer, I'm sorry to say, one lawyer, I cannot disclose his name, he used to do lots and lots and lots of political asylum cases. So once he did a case for Mr. Singh, Mm -hmm. And that was kind of with the secretary as a format. Then the next client comes as Mr. Patel, and she prepares the paper. She forgets to change the name from Singh to Patel. Right. Oh, awful. So, so awful. the officer must be saying, is he Singh? Is he Patel? Who is he? What's going on? Then, so, yeah, then so they went through the files, and they found that 80% of the cases were fraud. So the, so the bottom line for our viewers, I think, is that they need to know that they have to go seek out competent legal counsel with regard to these benefits. They're not, um, the, the benefits that are coming out, they're, they're highly technical. I mean, even uh, Michael and I who have, you know, Michael has 40 years of experience, I have uh, 25 years of experience, and even we have to read these memoranda several times ourselves yes. to be able to understand how it's going to impact you. So we are trying, of course, to get this information to be able to marshal it for your benefit. However, it is highly technical. So what we're saying also is uh, don't go to someone who doesn't really know what they're doing because unfortunately we end up seeing your case come to us after it's been messed up by someone and it ends up being more time and more money unscrewing the case than than it is had it you know it's it's much better if you do it right so the first time. So there's not only reading and the memos. How many times clients come 
with some issue that even we know that mostly the answer but if you are not sure we do a research we look at the previous decisions we look at the law we don't want to give an opinion to the client just okay okay fine no exactly we have the memorandum we have read three times it's still it always we always believe me 40 years down the road even once a while i get a case that i have hesitation in telling them do this do that right i have to do research i have to make sure i have to discuss with my colleagues and make sure exactly. that we so I that's think, the i think that that's also the that's a really good point michael and that is that in our office for example we collaborate when i meet with a client i collaborate with michael i collaborate with lutka with the three of us will get together because six eyes are better than two and that's always something that you need to take into account it's best to have someone who can see all the different angles for you so the message is again that you will see a lot of people approaching you uh, maybe within the weeks or they already might have done to some of you don't rush into that because you're not going to be able to file anything for another 2 3 months so right. take your time there's no rush what is the rush that you have to pay 5000 to some person okay get me the green card that means this person even doesn't know even we don't know at that point one month down the road exactly what the form will be what the fees will be what the documents will be exactly don't rush take your time and the most important thing is you have to retain a law firm that is highly experienced and you can trust and you can believe that they your job job you know exactly That's and michael you actually brought up a really good point which we haven't discussed in prior programs which i know that we we have an agenda that we're going to talk about but something that i want to bring up is how do all of these administrative benefits shake out for people who are in proceedings Yes. I think it's really important for us to talk about that because we have a lot of people who now are either in ICE custody, could become in ICE custody, or who are presently served with NTAs notices to appear who are now deferring their master calendar hearings to to get a uh, uh, to get a you know a, a hearing before the immigration judge. So how does it how does this all shake out for them? Well, one of the things that it's really important to uh, point out is that you obviously can apply for these benefits within the proceeding. by uh filing an administrative uh you know a, a motion for administrative closure and kicking it back for administrative processing because now it looks like there's some kind of an affirmative benefit that may be available to you so it's very important for, if you're in a situation like that where you're you're served with an NTA or you're in ICE custody make sure that you obviously raise these benefits now because you would be able to obviously take advantage of them. And one thing we haven't covered David I remember that on the enforcement part one this is for those people those of you undocumented aliens who do not come into any of these categories that we talked about in this uh, executive action the good thing is that president obama has very clearly said that these illegal aliens and undocumented aliens should not be separated from the families therefore they are focusing for a deportation of felons who have committed serious crimes those who are terrorist and he said doesn't say officially leave them alone that we cannot say because that will be touching the statue he says this is the lowest property oh, sorry uh, priority right lowest this is the priority, lowest priority. Yeah. let us focus on those and then Well, we that's what and that's what prosecutorial discretion is, is all about, Michael. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. So, what I'm telling our people that if you are still undocumented alien and uh, you are worried, you cannot sleep in the night, and are very much worried that you could be deported any time, don't worry about that. Take it easy. Enjoy your life. What you come, something may happen. Either there may be additional adi memos coming in that may provide a benefit to even those who do not have the citizen green card holder children or other categories. Maybe. president obama will see that this has gone very well excellent the whole country are appro approving the americans are in favor of this and uh, there is no issue about our legality of this he may come with another one or two more memorandums during the two year period right. okay or republicans see that this is going to be a major problem of our election in 2016 to lose all these latino votes and all that exactly they may sit down say okay all right let us work it out together and they may compromise and they may pass the cir right. something may happen so don't rush into anything that may put you in a, you know more trouble exactly that was an it's excellent michael because what you're doing is you're essentially looking out to the future for our viewers to say what 
is this all about? What potentially could happen? And I agree with you, Michael. I think that this was very political insofar as I think, first of all, pres my humble opinion, President Obama is extremely articulate. I think he's an excellent speaker. I think he did a great job of basically bringing the issues to the forefront and placing everything into the, uh, into the court of the GOP and to say, now guys, it's your turn, and ladies, it's your turn to give me a bill, Let, give me a bill that I can sign. And I, it would not surprise me after January 1st if the GOP gets together and does in fact come back with a comprehensive immigration reform bill. And as Michael properly pointed out, it's conceivable that the provisions in that bill could end up trumping what has been passed administratively by the president. So, so it's anyone's guess as to what's David, going to happen. You and me, we've been working very hard getting all this information and giving to our viewers and this helping them and they appreciate also. I got some calls and you might have got some calls from people. You guys are doing a great job. But I think we still need to tell them what you have to do on your part because we are working for you hard, but you have exactly. to do something as well. So what is your message? What can they do, like contacting the president, sending emails, calls, letters, which right. may help, which will, this way, it's, this way the president will know, oh my God, there's so many people still looking it's for an, It's an excellent point, Michael. It's actually um, that just the same way that we were talking about comprehensive immigration reform being a grassroots movement, that now it's for you to send messages to the president and send it to the White House because the White House has asked for it. When they released all this information, uh, they were basically saying that they want feedback. So give the government feedback by way of letters, by way of organizations that you belong to, in any way that you possibly can. Let them know how it affects you individually. So President Obama is so much against in separation of families. So what if one of our viewers here who's listening to our program is undocumented alien, he's not getting any benefit from this. He has a wife and children back in India, separated from the families. Right. It's so sad situation. You've got to tell the White House. You no, have to not let only tell. I, on. I have a better suggestion. Take the pictures of your little children, little the, the wife who has been living 10 years, 8 years, separated from you, little children that you saw them when they were 2 years old and they are 12 years old. And they are crying for the father, she's crying for the husband. What a pain, what a suffering. This and tell your story to the president. This is what is happening to me. Exactly. Look at my pictures. Look, at, we have to move them. We have to make bring this emotional stress to the attention. Let us say uh, ten thousand of these things. Well, you have to happen. personalize the story. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I think we're running out of time today, but we will be back. All right. Uh, thank. Thank you, viewers, so much for being with us. Uh, obviously, it's a lot of information we're bringing to you, uh, but it's obviously our hope that this is all to your benefit. Thank you very much, David. I you, hope uh, these uh, last three, four programs were very, very, very informative on this administrative actions. And uh, when we come back uh, after this, by that time, we might have got more information uh, going on on these or any additional we'll things that we may want to, to tell you, it. share with you. Anything Sorry. that we can share with you, tell you, we'll be here on ITV every Saturday and Sunday at 11.45 a.m. Thank you very much.